so welcome to today's video. Um, for the finished pages of September. This month I finally uh, got some more pages done than the last month. Um, when I look at my, um, my book, then in the last month um, it really was more like three or four pages per month uh, in most cases. So um, this month I finally got some more pages done. Okay, let's start with small victories. Or, well, I don't know why they sometimes change uh, titles in German uh, completely. It uh, translates to uh, small wonder worlds, uh, if I would translate it. But uh, the thing is, the paper in the German versions are uh, is so much better than in the English versions. That's why I always um, try to buy the German versions. So, small victories. And this is my very first page done in the book. I have it for a while now and I wanted to really, really do a page in here. And where is it? I started with this... Um, leaf circles and the thing was I had it in my hands a few times and always thought I want to do the, those ones first Zoom in a little bit more. Um, but the thing is my problem was that they are in comparison to for example Pictures like that, where you have a clear border, or um, where are the other ones? Um, like those, where you not have uh, so much space in between the the flowers or the leaves, and they were so open, and it's it seems so lost on the page, and um, that's why I thought, what do I want to do with it? And then I thought, okay, we could do a pastel chalk background and do it in a circle to get it more of a border feeling. And I used um, cheaper pastel chalk from Jackson's. And then I thought you don't have to do always pages like um, every small detail with layers of pencil and watercolors and stuff. Sometimes it is totally fine to do a page a little bit more simplistic with like here glitters and metallics. And that's why I thought I do one with warm colors and one with cool colors. And I've used um, metallic uh, uh, watercolors from Magic Fly and the hybrid dual metallic gel pens. And I think the result is quite nice. We have a mixture between the metallic shiny watercolor effect and the more glittery um, from the, the gel pens. They are more glittery. The other, the other one is more metallic and yeah, I think the result um, is quite nice because we now have um, a more clear border feeling with the circles and yeah, I think it does look nice. So I'm quite good with, with how it turned out. So that was small victories. Then I have done a page in Coco Princess. Some may already have seen this page because I did show it uh, per accident in my um, October plans video and this is this girl here with the yellow dress and I've done it with cheap um, acrylic markers and I have used one Posca pen here with the lighter orange yeah so nothing special just a quick quick page Then I have done one in Mein Herbstspaziergang from Rita Beermann. 
that's the um, autumn walk uh, book and the reason why I said I have to do at least one page this uh, autumn in here is that um, I think this is one of the least uh, colored um, seasons book I have from her I've done like uh, the the little mushroom before and I've done this page before and that's it in the whole book and I think I didn't do any pages last year or so so I thought okay at least one page this autumn is a must and I've chosen the the other stripes page because those uh, I always color first I don't like them so much in the past I wasn't so sure what to do with them uh, because if you have to really do all uh, little details with layers and layers of um, colored pencils it takes ages and it most of the time it doesn't look very nice on on those just because the details are too small and um, it, the, it you don't have a an, an good ombre effect uh, when when the details are too small and with this page I started doing it a little bit different just with watercolor and metallic watercolor and I thought yeah why not do do it like that again I've used uh, this here for my um, uh, color palette I've chosen this one here with the different greens and the pink and I used semi-art watercolors for the, the base colors and I used the Art Echo metallic set for some of the metallics and the uh, Super Golden Marker for some of the um, smaller parts like the dots for example and yeah we have the combination here of the art echo metallic is more like a pearlescent glittery uh, one so we have a little bit more glitter sparkle and with the super golden marker we have more like the metallic effect so basically it's here it's different the the watercolor is the more glittery one and the the markers are the more shiny one um, in comparison to the <laughs> the um, small victories where it is completely the opposite but yeah it is nothing special but it is I think it turned out nice with the color palette and um, yeah it's an okay page and one more page done in the book which hopefully some some day in the future will be com complete so then that is my personal highlight for the month uh, in Tagträume von, from uh, Gabi Wolf. Um, that's the artist who does the Minimania books. And that's, uh, there's also an English version um, where it says Daydreams or Daydream. Um, and I've done the little bird houses here. I've used um, Brutfuna um, colored pencil. I have the 260 um, set. And I also used Jackson's pastel chalk for the background. And yeah, that's it. Nothing more. I thought with the um, all the, the grass, the bushes and the trees, uh, we have a lot of brown and green. And then I thought, what do I want to do with um, the birdhouses? And I decided to use uh, blue turquoise as a contrast color to all the green. And thought I do like a sunset um, for the background, go from like orange to a more pink. And yeah, I really, really like how it turned out. It's, it's a little bit, the pastel chalk is a little bit um, 
darker in reality it shows up a little bit lighter on camera but I think um, yeah I really really like it and I try to get there a little bit of shading in, in, in the houses as well with the wood and it's the tree here so yeah my my person personal uh, favorite for for the month I think I think is this one so coming to the more bigger books of course as we have space timber I thought I will do at least one two pages for that and I thought that is definitely the best opportunity to finally do a page in alien words because it was an untouched book like i i don't know uh, but this month i i've done i think l three th three books i haven't touched before alien worlds small victories and we have another one um so yeah alien worlds from kirby rosanis and i've done the title page um, I've used semi-art watercolors for the base and the Obos uh, watercolor pencils as a normal pencil on top. I just didn't do um, pencils over the um, Northern Lights. They are just a watercolor. For the uh, borders of the clouds here I've used um, cheap um, gel pens which are like a neon pastel combination thing and yeah the color scheme for this planet I've searched for um, photos of uh, different planets on the internet done through uh, a big telescope thing uh, and I saw one with this color scheme and it looked so beautiful I thought okay I will do this but overall the, 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 the complete picture I'm not completely satisfied with how it turned out um, I often do like black backgrounds for uh, pictures because um, it helps that you have less space to cover and sometimes to not think about it but I think in this case it really hard, hardened um, all the work here because I somehow I think all the the elements and the colors don't really fit together and um, if I would have the opportunity to do um, more colors here with the clouds for example then um, it could have been more easy but this is this is one image that definitely is in the book as well as a double page spread and we don't have a, a dark background here so uh, yeah we'll have another chance to oh sorry to definitely do uh, a better version of that but yeah at least I have finally done a page in Alien Words. So that was this one. Then the other Space Timber page I've done is in Tales from the Forest Kingdom by Hannah Carlson. And it's uh, this one here. Because I thought we have the moon and the stars and they are catching stars I thought um, yeah it could be also one of the space timbers pa uh, pages and I'm not satisfied with the result I think like the moon and the stars and the, the these two are really nice but I don't like the trees I try to do uh, light shadow uh, thing with even uh, with the darker ones but you don't really see it it really I mean there is like a darker color in here but they are too probably too close to each other 
also I, I'm not quite sure but it just looks like I've done it with one color completely and the one on on the front are lighter but still not light enough to I, I don't know it just looks like so much dark green and the colors don't don't go well uh, together I'm I'm always when I see pages like that um, and I have trees like that I always tend to do them in realistic colors um, I think I should probably go out more and be more brave uh, and do some weird color colors because I see other uh, colorists do that like would have maybe done red or blue uh, trees or something like that and it always looks so cool and beautiful so um, yeah that's definitely something I absolutely don't like with the page but I think the like I said uh, the rabbit and the girl turned out quite nice I really like how the the face turned out from him or her coloration so that is definitely something I like I like uh, how the stars turn out they're really opaque shiny yeah um, I used the wax based Putfunas I have uh, the small 120 set so maybe that's also also a reason why I don't ha had enough of darker different darker colors to to get it look better I, I I'm not sure or it was just that my color choice was not good enough um, and I used for the stars I used magic fly metallic watercolor I used a white gel pen for some um, areas from Sakura I use semi-art watercolors as a base also Daniel Smith and White Knights watercolors and I used the uh, super granulating watercolors from Schminke for the background that is um, Galaxy Violet and if you look closely you definitely can see the color separation effect we have different colored areas and you even can see a little bit of granulation if you look closely so definitely colors like that if it is from Schminke or another brand they do work on normal paper as well of course the effect is not as strong as it is on a watercolor paper but you still can see color separation and you can see granulation the the thing is here just to find the right amount of water to get not too much water to damage the paper but enough water that you get the color separation effect and if you are not sure how much um, you have to use then um, I would just try on a page like that if a if the book doesn't have test pages pages where it does not matter so much if um, if they bleed through to test it and yeah you can do very very beautiful and nice uh, things with with uh, super granulating watercolors on normal paper as well so yeah this is my page in Tales from the Forest Kingdom. Then I have done one in Nice Little Town 3 from Tanya Bogema Stolova. And it was our on stream project. <laughs> I've named it Cozy Hippie House because of the the flower and the style of the flowers really reminded me on uh, of the hippie time. And we choose together, my viewers and I, the color palette. And we decided that 
with the hippie theme we do uh, a little bit more um, colors which were often used in that time like orange and that type of green yellow and things like that and yeah i think it really turned out quite nice i've used um, the opos watercolor pencil as a normal pencil in here and the only other thing we used is a super cheap uh, golden marker from a dollar shop because it is not as shiny as other metallics uh, are and i thought um, with the whole setting here a really shiny or glittery um, marker or paint um, wouldn't feel right in this setting so a little bit of metallic shine but very um, very mild one for the page and yeah i, I really like how, how the house looks and yeah i i, I do like I, I i'm a big fan of when i'm meeting new people and seeing their flat or their house for the first time to take a look at and i love to to see um I have some British and German uh, TV series where people buy old houses and renovate them. And I absolutely love to watch that. I'm, I, I love to see what people do with houses. And yeah, you often have people who really do some, some cozy areas like that. And I, I, I really, really love them. I love such cozy little spaces for reading or for snuggling in and do something like reading or other other like sketching or so so yeah that is the cozy happy house in nice little town three and then i have this is the other the third book i haven't touched before so that was an untouched book and we have to, uh, finally done a page in here um, sadly the first page and it already falls up apart fall, falls apart so that's a big big negative point here but I did do uh, this here. I, I, what 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 are they called in English? In, in German, it's wap, Wappen. Coat of arms, I think. Yeah, coat of arms. Was wasn't so sure. Um, I know with uh, genuine heraldics, there are, are rules like to not do two colors next to each other. They has, have to be like gold or silver or something like that in between. I think black and white is also okay. Um, but of course, we are not doing genuine heraldics, but still I wanted to do a limited color palette with the gold and the blue as the main colors but just golden blue looked a little bit bland. That's why I chose to do a little bit red as well in it. Um, I've used, what did I use? Semi-art watercolor as a base and the 260 uh, set from Brut Fune. I used hybrid gel pen in gold for uh, the little dots. And um, yeah, very cheap pastel chalk from Lille, uh, from their own brand um, Crelando. And I thought I use a brown, for example, sometimes you have a coat of arm on a wall. And I thought if you have a wooden wall, that could be... Um, something so i i thought that that is a good reason for the brown and also um i don't want it to add another color which is very glowy so i thought i want to have something more muted to get the colors on the coat of arm pop more 
and to be more uh, uh, on focus and that that is really more uh, like a back color and not like something which overpowers the rest of the image. So that's why I've chosen the brown. I've used a washi tape to get some nice border because I didn't want to go all the way here just because it falls apart. Um, and I would have to press more and um, it would definitely do more damage. And I thought um, it is not really necessary to go to the, to the border. So yeah, washi tape really helps with, with that. And I think it turned out quite nice. It was also one of the, the images just because we have a lot of space um, in between here, like the, I don't know what it should be, like wheat or something else. It's really floating in nothingness, uh, all the leaves on here. And um, yeah, that really was why I wanted to do this as the first image in the book. And I had the book in my hands so many times over the year. And that was always the thing where I thought, oh, but I don't know what to do with the background. But yeah, I think now it turned out quite, quite nice. Um, it really works well with the brown and you don't have this floating feeling anymore that um, yeah, these elements like floating in nothingness. So yeah, really like how, how that has uh, turned out in the end. So that was my very first page in Romantic Country from Erie. That's the first one. And um, those are all my colored pages. But as other people do show what they're colored or drawn on their own, I thought I will do this this month as well. And yeah, that was also an on-stream project. I do um, on Mondays. I always do my own art on Twitch, and on Wednesday I do edit coloring. And this is Sarah from the 80s um, fantasy movie Labyrinth with uh, David Bowie. And this is the, from the Balgone, uh, the ba ba Balgone scene. And yeah, it is like oh, the, the, the sketch and the outlines are like three years old at least. So it was a really, really old uh, image that I finally wanted to, to color. I've done like a little bit of iridescent um, watercolor on it because the dress in reality also have this metallic um, splotches on and some more metallic uh, watercolors in here. And yeah, some nice granulating watercolors here for the background. I think that is the Volcano Violet and that is uh, one of the really nasty ones from uh, Supervision but one of the, the better ones where the dye didn't fade as badly. So that is like a green purple combination. And yeah, that's the, the first. And I've done another um, image. It was also an on-stream project. It's from a, basically from another 80s fantasy movie, uh, The Dark Crystal. And yeah, also have some metallic watercolors. And I think the, the most um, Colors I've used are from Daniel Smith because I have this very small set uh, which I've bought for testing the brand ages ago and I finally want to use it up. And I'm nearly now on the, I'm, I'm reaching the two years for, and they, they are one eighth pants. So there is like one, 0 0.3 milliliters of color in it, but 
with really high quality colors they go a very long time so i've started using the set as my main set for um artist grade watercolors in january 23 and now we're in in autumn 24 and still have not even half the the colors emptied so yeah most of them are Ardenia Smith, uh, a little bit of White Knights, I think. And the metallic watercolors are, I think, from Magic Fly, because that, those are the ones I want to empty as well. And the background is mixed, a self-made, a self-mixed um, burnt amber with uh, the Luna Black, which is the Black Iron Oxide, and um, the Transparent Red Iron Oxide. And they have two granulating color, and uh, especially the Luna Black is um, the Black Iron Oxide from Daniel Smith. It's, uh, it's a really strongly granulating one, and if you use um, enough water, then you get this really strong granulation effect. And yeah, another thing maybe, I've seen a lot of, this is uh, a 100% cotton paper pad and it was glued all over. And the page wa uh, which was on it before, that was before I got those um, things uh, uh, which are made especially for pads to loosen the, the page out. And I used a sharp knife and that way I damaged the, the paper here. And if you damage the, the paper, then um, the area will soak up more paint and that you will see in, in, in your drawing later on. And that's why I totally don't recommend using sharp knives to uh, get off the pages. There are, I don't know what they're called. Um, I call them in German, I call them always uh, Schiffchen, um, which is also, if you have, uh, uh, it's, it's like, it basically means little ship, but um, If you have a, a, a loom, you have these things where you go up and down with your um, with your uh, wool, and these are called Schiffchen in, in German. So that's why I, I call them that as well, because they look a little bit um, similar to them. I have multiple ones. This is a blue one. I have a, I have a green green one as well, and. That way you can go into the area where um, it is not glued. Um, all the pads have sometimes in the upper part, sometimes here. So I have one which has it on, on the corner. Go in and get the page uh, out. And you get them mostly made out of plastic. Um, so I know some um, are made from bamboo or I even have one made of um, bone from, uh, from a cow or a bull. So there are multiple options, but it is definitely um, best to use something like that because it doesn't damage, it, damage the page, which is underneath. And yeah, you don't get those nasty edges then. So yeah, if you know what, how this is named in English, please let me know because uh, I couldn't find any dictionary uh, having listed something like that. I know these are also called uh, Faltbein in, in German, which is uh, like folding leg, uh, the translation, if you would translate it directly, because... Um, this shape is also used for if you are folding paper over to really 
get your to not have it the, the, to do it with the finger to get the folding part um, folded as best as uh, possible but yeah I have no clue how how those are named in English please let me know if you know so yeah those are all my pages for the month thank you so much for watching as always a uh, thumbs up or a follow is very much appreciated and yeah i hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon in one of my other videos bye bye and take good care of yourself